everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Mass Effect 2. Last time we left off we finished the last of the loyalty missions with Jacob. Helping him to locate the last known place his father was. Uh, which was the crash site of the Gernsback. His father was still alive, um, but all was not, you know, happy, and, uh, happy as Larry. Because, uh, yes, he forced the crew members of the ship to eat the poisonous food from the planet and this caused all hell to break loose and other such problems. Anyway, enough about that. It's kind of a complex situation to be honest with you. I didn't fully follow it 100%. Mainly because I was playing it at half past ten at night and I was tired. But anyway, uh, what is the order of the day for this set of updates. Well, as we left off last time, I did highlight that this session, and maybe even the next session, will be a change of pace. We've been doing mission after mission after mission, and now it's time for us to take a, a breather. Some of you won't like this. Some of you may, and some of you will be indifferent, but it's part of the game, and I'm going to do it. And I enjoy doing it, so I'm going to keep it in. And if you don't want to watch it, you can always skip it. Uh, but I'm going to go around all the systems, and look at all the planets, all the anomalies, all the side missions that we can possibly do. I am going to do that now, before we press on any further with the main mission. Now, if you look how many clusters there are, there is a hell of a lot. A hell of a lot indeed. So this is going to take some time. Now normally I read most, if not all, of the planet's descriptions, but I'm not going to do that because that will take far too long. Even longer than I would care to do it for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, read the planetary descriptions that seem to have the most interesting backstories. So we're going to start from here and we're going to sort of work our way in a clockwise manner. So, uh, we might as well start here, the Nubian Expanse. And uh, we'll see what we can stumble across. My main reason for doing this is for completion's sake, and also to gain some uh, credits, if we possibly can, to uh, assist us in purchasing the last few bits and bobs of the technological upgrades. So this cluster, or this system rather, the DACA system, has been fully explored, so we move on to the Kalabshar to see what awaits us over there. So the Nubian Expanse. I think these two these two uh, systems may have been added um, per the star charts that I purchased in Ilium. Because I'm sure I did this uh, before. Well, look at the size of this sun. Holy moly, massive! But this, this system only has one planet. And it's a gas giant. Unremarkable. So there we go. Nothing much to report. Moving on. To the Kalabshar system. Where we have two planets. Another gas giant it looks like. Tefnut. Home to a Helium 3 collection. And the nearest refueling facility to the Nubian Expanse's mass relay. Oh no, is this where we went to see Tally in the Nubian Expanse? Possibly. Tally's um, flotilla. As such, it is a major gateway to the Verge and Terminus systems and has become famous for its hospitality industry. Tefnut's motto is known throughout the galaxy. Like home, only better. Visitors here can stay at expansive resort stations, watch locally produced entertainment, buy mind-affecting substances not welcomed in Citadel space, and rent companionship. Resources are shipped in from Yam at substantial discounts, allowing the small space stations to have surprising luxuries such as edible arthropods and large amounts of fresh water. Mm -hmm. This is Yam. With all the 90% of its surface covered in oceans, Yarm is a habitable nitrogen-oxygen world. 
but its extremes can be quite hostile to sapient life. The heat from its extremely long days reached dangerous levels ranging from 24 degrees Celsius at night to 53 degrees in the afternoon in the temperate zones. Hurricanes can run unchecked across the oceans with winds reaching up to 250 kilometers per hour. While there are some arthropod-like animals, the predominant forms of life are various kinds of toxic algae uh, algae blooms that stretch hundreds of kilometers across. However, other biohydrocarbon algae blooms are suitable for use as biofuel, and farming the green gold forms the backbone of Yarm's economy. Okay, okay. So there we go, the Nubin Expanse has been explored. Move on to the uh, next cluster. We shall. Uh, after we've refueled. Is this where the flotilla was? Pra oh no, this is where we went to assist Jack Praja. Yeah, that's it. I knew I recognised the name from somewhere. Anyway, moving further north to the Hades Nexus, which we've already explored, okay. The Far Rim. The Shadow Sea. So here we are in uh, Aira, and it seems to me that Aira is the only system within this cluster, so it shouldn't take us too long. What's this? Watchman. Nothing remarkable. Prospect. In a tragic turn of events, a galactic uranium surplus drove half the mining firms out of business, and the surfaces of some moons are littered with the bodies of executives who committed suicide by airlock. Venture. Nothing remarkable. And there's Horizon, which was one of the planets that we uh, where one of the colonies were was when we travelled there. The Horizon colony where we met the collectors. So that is a shadow sea. Okay then, the far rim should be next to oh, is what's this? Kalestone Rift? The Hawking Eater? What's this one here? The Phoenix Massing. Alright, Tasra. Ishasara. Gas giant. Pahu. Constantly scorched by the white bright giant it orbits. And finally, Sarape. Feel free, obviously, if you want to read the descriptions of the planets that I'm not reading out. You can always pause it. But as I say, I'm only reading the planets <clears throat> that seem to have an interesting story to them. Or any possible Earth-like habitable planets. Have we been here? Ekuna. Well, this looks interesting. This is quite a big one. First discovered by the Quarians at the turn of the century, Akuna is habitable but a second tier choice for most species. Circling an orange sun, Akuna averages below freezing temperatures. This led development firms to colonise at the planet's equator where the climate is tolerable for agriculture. The Quarians seeking a homeworld of their own petitioned the Citadel Council for the right to take over Akuna, but they had already settled a few hundred thousand Quarians on the planet before approaching the Council. 
Seeing this occupation as an illegal act, the council turned a deaf ear to the Quarian pleas and gave the world to the Elcor, who could withstand the high gravity of the world far better. The Quarians squatting on the planet were given one galactic standard month to leave, at which point their colonies would be bombarded. The junk left behind by the fleeing Quarians clogs up portions of the landscape to this day. Non Elcor visitors to Akuna are advised to use personal or vehicular mass effect fields to lighten the pressure, as the surface gravity will otherwise cause health and mechanical problems. Phoenix massing has been explored. So they're an Elcor planet. Okay, are we a bit blue? Chaos Don Rift, we have the Cellular Sea, the New Bin Expanse, Hades Nexus. Next up is the Far Rim. Uh, we have been here. Ma'at. the one planet and look at the site it's bigger than the it's bigger than its sun Amut is an enormous hydrogen helium giant with a mass approximately nine times that of Jupiter 2,900 times that of Earth <clears throat> the Geth have colonized many of Amut's moons Hawking Eater. This is where our next uh, mission is, and I hope it doesn't, I don't trigger it. In fact, I may come here last. Far Rim. Save crashing ship in the Pylos Nebula. I have no idea what that mission relates to, of course, but um, we'll soon see. We'll soon see. Soon see. The Narip system with Jonas, methane ammonia ice giant. From orbit, Normandy sensors can pick out a hand painted sign some waggish employee has left outside the complex. Last chance fuel for 100 light years. Here we have Isale with some rings. How many planets are there? One, two, and this ship here would be three. The MSV Broken Arrow. Geth signatures detected. Well, let's go aboard, shall we? Let's loot and plunder and see what we can do. Who would be best to deal with the Geth? That's the question. I think, uh... Oh, excuse me. Okay, let's have a look. <coughs> Back again. More than Garrus. Garrus has uh, got uh, overload and... Whatever else. Concussive shot. Three points into nothing. Seven points.
Oh, are we going to have to go quickly? Race against time! So I actually knowingly boarded a ship that is going to impact with uh, a planet. Maybe not a good choice. Captain's log, yellow alert! I'm moving the ship to yellow alert. While we have seen no signs of trouble, I'm not so sure we won't run into Geth this far out. We have to be prepared for anything. I've been told it's a terrible idea to go this far out toward Geth territory, but these colonies need to defend themselves. Sometimes I think the only thing keeping the crew from shriveling up in fear is the hundred crates of military-grade weaponry on board. A little shawl even we get to the Neria Pier system will do us all some good. We have a lot of deliveries to make, and it's not going to get any friendly out here. Red alert! The Geth are attacking! We're ill-equipped for an attack of this magnitude, but we'll do everything we can to survive this. These colonies need these weapons, and this attack is further proof of how dire the situation is out here. Signing off. All hands to evacuate! Should the Geth gain control of this ship, they gain control of 100 crates of weapons in the cargo hold. Therefore, I'm using my authorization codes to scuttle the ship. I intend to stay aboard to make sure the ship dies gracefully. <laughs> How kind of you. Disable the ship's engines, causing the orbit to decay. This will bring the MSV Broken Arrow down to the surface where the self-destruct timer will destroy the ship. Is this him? Anyway, enough chitty chatty, man. We've got to move. Or else we go down with this thing. Hello, Geth. How are you? Ah, two of you. Uh oh! Can't target them. I'm not hearing any fire from my friends here. I assume they're outside. Ah, you see, never happen to doing that sometimes. Just observing me take care of business while they sit and do whatever they're doing. Navigation status offline, life support status, systems damaged, hull breach detected, engine status disabled, to restore power, re-engage the power couplings. How does one go about doing that, I ask? Better find out quickly, because we got 4 minutes 36 seconds to find out. Engine restart. Cow, coupling number one. God damn it! Thank the lords. Alright, try again. Oh. Get lost, you stupid geth! Bloody things. Right. Try again. Activate how I don't think this is working. Three minutes forty five. Do I really have interrupted? Okay, this is really getting on my flaming wires now. I'm normally a patient man, but this is testing my patience. Get out of cover, you Damn it! Scratch one! Right, cover me now, for God's sake! Are we done? Is that it? Get out of it, will ya? How do I get... How do I get across? Fire in the hole! Next! Ok. 
Okay, good. Do you have a sniper rifle on? Switch up! Killed that one. Engine restart. Mission summary! <coughs> Stabilized MSV Broken Arrow, and Geth have been disengaged, the colony is safe. A little bit of experience, 7,500 credits, Meridium close report.